What's up everybody, John here with another video. For those of you that are interested in getting a job on board a cruise ship, and uh, we got another one coming up for you, and this one is going to be all about stuff that you need to bring. Like, when you get hired to work on board the ship, your first question is, well, what do I need to bring? Well, this video is going to hopefully make that a little bit easier for you. Now, for those of you that haven't watched any of my videos already, and you wanna kinda of find out if this cruise ship life is for you, then you're gonna to wanna to head on over and click here, and you're gonna to wanna to watch my first video on this Working On Board a Cruise Ship series. And this is where you're gonna ask yourself a bunch of questions and find out if working on board a ship is for you, uh, or if it's not for you. And then, you're gonna to wanna to click on this video, and that's gonna kinda of give you a little bit of information on how to actually apply for working on board a cruise ship. It's not going to guarantee you a job, it's just going to be able to point you right in the correct direction. All right. So once you've watched those videos, then come on back and then we can enjoy this one. So, what do you need to bring on your first contract? Well, you're going to be going away for about six to ten months, so that's a pretty big amount of time to be away. And you're not really going to want to bring your entire life with you because of overweight fees and just the fact that you're gonna need a place to put it all and the cabins are not that big. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is follow this, write this down, and I'm gonna give you, as best as I can, the bare essentials that you're gonna to need to definitely take with you for your first contract. Your next couple of contracts, you'll learn, you'll get the idea, you'll know what you need, you'll know what you don't need, you'll figure it out, but that first contract, this is what it's for. Let's start with clothes. What kind of clothes do you bring for your first contract? Well, first of all, you've got your bare essentials. You've got your socks and you've got your underwear. Those are the most important things when packing. I recommend bringing enough to last you for two weeks. Now, the reason for that is sometimes you can't do laundry when you want to do laundry because there are over a thousand crew members on most ships and 10 washers and dryers. Do the math. That's my least favorite thing on the ship, was doing laundry. But it's possible. It just might not get done exactly when you need it to get done. So two weeks worth of underwear and socks, you should be okay. Next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is find out if your work uniform is provided for you. If your work uniform is provided for you, that's going to cut out a lot of extra clothes that you're gonna to need to bring. If it's not, then you're gonna to wanna to play it safe and you're gonna to wanna to bring some sort of form of business or corporate casual clothes. Kind of like a button-up shirt with a collar and nice pants. And for girls, it's uh, something dressy but not fancy or uh, uh, slutty if you were going out to a club. So uh, business or corporate casual is the safest bet to wear if you have to provide your own uniform. Uh, and then you're also gonna to wanna to bring some sort of elegant or formal attire. Now for guys, that is a suit or a tuxedo. Uh, with a tie, um, and then for ladies, that is going to be a fancy dress or a gown. Now those are for people who have guest area privileges, um, or if you do happen to get the opportunity to go into the guest area and to use their amenities uh, during an elegant night or a formal night, you're going to need to dress in a formal or elegant attire. So that's going to be another question that you're going to want to ask when you're getting hired, is just kind of, what is my attire? So. If your uniform's provided for you, you're set, but still bring some sort of form of business or corporate casual and some sort of form of elegant in case you do get the opportunity to go out at night in the guest areas. Next thing you're gonna wanna bring is something that you can wear when you're just hanging out in your downtime. Now, that's going to be something when you're getting off in the ports. Uh, check what the weather's gonna be like in the uh, itinerary that you're gonna be going on. Because if you're going to the Caribbean, then you know, shorts, t-shirts, tank tops, bathing suits, sandals, perfect. But if you're gonna be going to Alaska, or if you're gonna be going to uh, Canada, or anywhere in Europe, you know, it depends what the weather's gonna be like. We were in, we were in Europe uh, when it was, you know, still in its winter time, so. But we were there for the, we were actually there for a good three seasons, so we had to bring kind of a weird, a weird collection of clothes. Um, so bring, bring stuff that's uh, weather appropriate, so you're gonna have to do a little bit of research on your end to find out your itinerary. But one thing that is good to know is always bring at least something for the opposite season. For example, we were on a uh, cruise, one of our ships was out of Miami, doing all the Caribbean, all the Caribbean, all the Caribbean, and then three months into my contract, we relocated, we came up to Boston, and we started doing Eastern, uh, Canada, uh, Eastern Canada, which was chilly, so I needed a jacket. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, I luckily brought one, so that worked out. Um, or you can get transferred in the middle of your contract to another ship that's in Alaska. And if you're only packed for the beach, you're gonna need to buy a sweatshirt. <laughs> you're gonna wanna bring some clothes for when you're hanging out in your cabin, uh, for whatever you sleep in, so if that is the nude, then you might wanna bring at least a pair of shorts or something to not scare your roommate. When it comes to shoes, um, that's also kind of important as well. Uh, some of the people who have their uniforms provided for them will also have a pair of work shoes provided for you. They're kind of slip resistant, just kind of nice shoes. You're gonna wanna bring a pair of dress shoes if you have to wear your casual or your corporate attire. B bring a pair of sneakers or sandals, flip-flops, thongs, whatever you call them. Sneakers is if you work out or if you go out in port and you want to wear them. And then the sandals and stuff, that's pretty obvious. But some ships have a dress code inside their crew and staff messes where they can't have any open-toed shoes. So you can't go on to the mess where everybody's eating dinner with your sandals because some people think that's non-hygienic. So, you know, you have to also kind of be aware of those weird, those weird uh, dress codes as well. But I'll actually have another video coming up soon and I'll go over dress codes in detail. Stay tuned for that one. That'll be coming up soon. You got your clothes. You got your clothes that you need to bring. You got a next thing that you're going to want to bring is toiletries. Now, toiletries are very important because they cover all the necessities, you know, shampoo, conditioner, toothpaste, deodorant, mouthwash, body wash, Toilet paper, you'll be okay. You don't have to bring toilet paper. They'll provide that for you. They'll replenish it, you know, as much as you need. You know, the world is your oyster. But you're going to want to bring those other things. Now, this is what you're going to not want to do. You're not going to want to go out and buy a bunch of full-size things to bring right away to your first contract. Your luggage is going to weigh a ton. Most of the home ports have some sort of store that you can go to where you can buy all those things. Most ports have some sort of store that you can go to and buy those things. Now, you might get lucky and they might have name brand stuff that you're used to using at home, or you might not get lucky and you have to buy some uh, version of that from that country. What you can do for your first couple of days on board is stock up on a bunch of travel size shampoos, conditioners, mouthwash, toothpaste, deodorant, you know, bring all that with you. And then after your first cruise, when you have time off in the port, run, do, go to the store and buy all the full size versions of those things to bring back to the ship and you'll be okay and your luggage won't weigh a ton. And then you're gonna wanna bring some personal uh, sanity items uh, and that's just things to kinda keep yourself entertained when you have some downtime. So whether that be an iPod, a laptop, a tablet, a Kindle, you know, books, uh, movies, uh, DVDs, CDs, your hard drive, uh, if you have a Game Boy or a DS or a PSP, something like that, just to kind of keep you occupied when you're not working, unless you sleep, which is kind of what I did. I would go back to my cabin when I wasn't working and read and play some video games and sleep. That's all I did. Um, so you're going to want to bring those because those will be a lifesaver. And a computer is very important because when you get off in ports, you're going to want to find the Wi-Fi. You're going to want to, you know, brag about your job and everything to your friends. You don't want to stay in touch with your family and friends back home. Keep in mind that when you do get a laptop, if you get a giant one that's huge and heavy, you're going to be carrying that around a lot to a bunch of different places. That may be close to the ship. They may not be close to the ship. So you're going to want to keep that in mind and uh, maybe get a smaller one. Or even if you get an iPad and you can just bring that and do all your quick internet stuff just on like a, you know, a tablet. I wish I thought of that, but I had a big computer that I dragged around. So those are the things that you're gonna wanna bring. You got your breakdown of your clothes, got your breakdown of your toiletries, and I got your breakdown of your personal items. Keep you from going crazy. Another thing is uh, some sort of watch clock or alarm clock uh, that you're gonna need to, to wake up uh, because there's not ones provided for you in your cabins. What you're gonna wanna do is bring two. Now, the reason why you need to bring two is uh, you're going to want to have a backup because sometimes if you have one that's plugged into the wall, the ship might go through a power surge where the power might cut out for half a second and that'll just cause, you know, the, 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 the alarm clock to start blinking 12 o'clock. not going to be on time for work. I always had two alarms set. I used to put my phone on airplane mode and then I would set that alarm and then I would have my iPod dock, which actually had this backup thing where... If the power went out, it would still tell the time, and then the alarm would go off and it would just be a beep instead of play the music from the iPod. So I'd always set one and the other one about 10 minutes apart, just in case, because I was scared of being late. And also, it doesn't help that the cabins are extremely dark, so when you go to sleep, you sleep really well. <laughs> it's 
Wonderful. Clothes, toiletries, personal items, alarm clocks, and then you're also going to want to bring your travel documents, your IDs, your credit cards, uh, your passport, your um, uh, employee letter, your, your, your letter of uh, employment, uh, your visas, medical, you want to bring your medical, just make sure you have all those things with you and ready to go. But your uh, your the person that hires you will go over all that information, exactly what you need document-wise. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to send a comment or find my Facebook page. That's uh, John, facebook.com slash John Gleason Comedy. Send me some messages there, and I'll be able to get back to you as quick as I can. If you leave some comments down below, again, I will respond. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Be sure to like the video, share it with any of your friends, and also make sure to subscribe because like I said before, I've got a bunch of videos coming up and I do apologize for the delay in the last two videos to this one, but there's just life was happening. So I couldn't really, couldn't really do it, but now life has kind of slowed down. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we got another video coming up soon and it's gonna be more information to help you make that decision on whether or not you wanna work on board a cruise ship and what you need to do to get that job. So once again, I'm John. Take it easy.